Welcome back to Coppers and Brass, and this is the sixth and final episode in the second series. Um, over the last 12 programmes, we've been looking at a wide range of issues to do with Irish traditional music. And I suppose we've kept the good stuff to the end because this is about etiquette at sessions. It's an issue that is controversial, often talked about, but rarely discussed. And if you think that's a paradox, I'm the right man to explain it all to us. He is the proprietor of the Cobblestones, a bar that has music seven days a week and quite a few afternoons, none other than Tom Mulligan. Tom, you're welcome. Thank you very much, Tommy. Good to see you. Good you're going to help see. me with this ah, big we, subject, are you? Yeah, we'll see where we we'll go. have a look at yeah. it. Before we do, though, let's have a look at a few other views on etiquette in sessions. I've heard a lot about the London pub has been really significant in the whole sort of area of the first time the traditional music is performed in the pub. It's now assumed that it's almost like ageless that people have been playing Irish music and traditional music in pubs forever, like, but it's not. It's the like 1960s. Dublin as well. The Dubliners were significant in bringing ballads and songs into pubs, you know, so I imagine the pub session is an urban phenomenon to start with that has mutated into the country, even though that wouldn't be properly appreciated by people at all. Sessions were, were sparse enough at the time. It was, we weren't, weren't a big number of musicians. And I suppose we played in a, with, with street sessions, we would have played in s small bars. The difference now is the bars have got bigger and you can get more people into them, which is the downside of it is that you get more, I suppose, should be listeners into it. And it's usually more noise that comes in. And I suppose even the size of the session has increased. We were always playing with the older musicians and you'd be sitting waiting for them to drop a gem or two of a new tune or a, something you missed. Whereas now the session seems to be more a social gathering of people just sometimes just mindlessly playing reels from one end of the day to the next, which it doesn't have the same enjoyment, I suppose. It doesn't have the same variety. And I think from a listening point of view, it's, it's not as interesting as when somebody can break it with a song and either play a barn dance or dance a bit of a set. Uh, they've sort of stratified the whole thing. It's either set dancing, music or song. And whereas in the old, in my, in my youth, it was all happening around at the same time. There is this misconception, I think, that a session is a, a completely kind of open um, uh, invitation to anybody to kind of join in, you know, including somebody that can tap a bottle with a coin or, you know, that can, um, um, you know, that can go out and buy a, buy a bow on and just sit into a session the next day. There's definitely a bit of etiquette where you should kind of sit down and kind of be invited to play a tune, you know, play along with what they're playing, but if you're going to go starting tunes off, you kind of need to be sort of invited in a way. Well, I remember uh, talking about session etiquette. Uh, I was lying in a, in a bed one day in, in the west coast of America and I picked up a leaflet and I was saying session etiquette and I started laughing at the idea of it. And I read through it and it was all the things that we would have taken for granted. You know, when you arrive at a session, you sort of check it out, you, you, you're welcomed in. Um, obviously, it's your peer group. Uh, if you're obviously one of the better musicians or but, but more fun than others, you might be encouraged into the centre of the circle sooner than somebody else would. Um, also, you sort of be aware of the balance that you sort of, you take your place in a, in a, in a, in a I suppose, a hierarchical mode in that uh, the senior musicians or the most respected musicians would be given the opportunity to, to start most or many of the tunes um, and you'd always be what you'd always taken from the other side if you're leading a session yourself you know you're not expected to lead every set but you, you would encourage others to, to take off at, at various times sometimes people take that as a nod to take on a solo performance and to uh, stand on the shoulders of others and perform you know solo solo pieces endlessly i've seen especially at flower Kells, did this kind of mad um, thing about uh, uh, you know th this kind of uh, obsession with with joining into a session you know I've, I've seen people get up and go and buy a drink and while they're gone somebody sat in their seat you know <laughs> which is just you know it's an outrageous way to behave you know it's 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 guerrilla tactics it's like <laughs> There are varying approaches depending on your uh, on, on your level of um, uh, <laughs> your your uh, level of diplomacy, I suppose, <laughs> um, and they vary from the extreme end, uh, which I, I won't go into detail, but it usually involves expletives, like you know, to uh, to trying to be you know trying to be subtle and trying to hint to people that they're not quite you know doing it the right way. And see, the problem is sessions. You don't want to seem elitist about it because. You know, traditional music does do its best not 
to be elitist, you know? It's often in the, in the personality of the person. People with a good ju judge of character and a good social understanding will be aware that they're welcome to play for a while and then moves on to somebody else. And that's, that's the beauty of it. I have a nice story about um, Paddy Calori. He was a local fiddle player and he was playing years ago in a pub called Comers with Tommy Peoples. And uh, he was well into his 70s now at this stage and he's gone a bit deaf and I suppose he was a bit shaky and the fiddle was completely out of tune. You know, so rather than Tommy saying, give me an A there, Paddy, or, you know, you're out of tune or you're flat, he just waited for Paddy to go to the toilet. And when Paddy was gone to the toilet, he tuned up his fiddle. So when he came back from the toilet, they were just playing spot on, lovely music. Probably the elite of the musicians of this world, and that I would consider the elite, um, I've played with them all, and, and my, my own personal elite, I've played with them, and they're the nicest people in the world, and they're the most inclusive people in the world. It's more often than not the, 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 the musician that's a step below them. That's the lad that'll have a problem with certain people. And that's the lad that'll, that'll create problems in a session. Um, when, you get to, when you get to the top level, um, like I hopefully strive to, to, to get to, they're, they're, the, they're the real musicians. And, and music is about making friends. And, and it's lads that are uh, rung below that. It might have a little chip on their shoulder because of that. They're the ones that can create a problem, that make people... See, it's a lot easier to include people. For me to sit down with non-professional musicians, uh, I don't, it's never an issue, and they don't have an issue either, because they know that the, the basic love for the music is what you're there for, and you wouldn't, you're not going to be grandstanding and taking over a thing as, as a gig. You take your place in the session, as you always did, and that's the... I think it's, a, it's a sort of a, an agreement, a sort of a gentleman's agreement, for want of a better word, that uh, everybody leads and everybody takes a turn, but everybody listens. Tom, plenty of interesting views there, and we'll come back to them in a second. But before we do, maybe you tell us a little bit about yourself and your background, and indeed, indeed. your musical background in particular. Uh, well, um, I got involved in um, in the pub business maybe 30 years ago in mm -hmm. Black Rock and County Loud. When I remember and, it well. Myself and my brother Alfie <laughs> moved there for, uh, for a time. We were there for four to five years, and then I came to Dublin. Alfie is still in Dundalk. But... Um, we had music there. Some of the player, some of the people that you were Jerry talking, about, Jerry O'Connor, Desi yeah. Wilkinson, they were mm -hmm. all playing there. So it was top class music. Mm -hmm. um, I come from a family of musicians. My father was a fiddle player and piper from Leitrim. And, uh, brothers Neely, and Alfie, mm -hmm. and Jerry, who were, who were pipers yeah, as pipe, well. Pipe, and yeah. All their children play music, and my own do as well. And we encounter music seven days a week now, whether we want it or not, you know. So we do see quite a lot of music and quite a lot of good music, and we encounter etiquette along the way as well. Well, Tom, you're, you are, as you see, you're in an ideal position. I think you've, yeah. you've sessioned seven nights a week and yeah. quite a few afternoons, Indeed. and there's a wide variety of issues that have been raised there. But what are the main issues as, from, from your perspective? What are the things that work well at sessions and what doesn't work well and what causes annoyance or yeah well uh, for starters you need somebody that is uh, who is directing the session for okay. starters and usually that's an anchor man or woman uh, on uh, any given session and or if it's if it's an impromptu session it's somebody that starts it and they mm -hmm. know what they're on about um the, the the main requirement to sit in on a session is an ability to play along with the with the people who are running the session like you have to have a certain amount of ability and you cannot uh, hope to do your practicing in the session because it ruins it for everybody so the first requirement would be that you would have a certain ability but what happens if my opinion of my ability isn't what's necessary and i come in assuming that i'm great yeah and i'm, and I'm not who then says, Tommy, you're not really up to it and you're ruining the yeah, session? Yeah. How does that get that? Well, I, I think, you know, uh, any musician knows their ability. A visiting musician um, to a session may encounter, um, 
He may have a different repertoire of music for starters. He may join in in, in mm -hmm. some of the some of the sets. He may not be able to join in in some of the sets. And particularly if you were coming from a completely different atmosphere, say you were you played your music in America or England or Germany, mm -hmm. it may be a different uh, format. It may be uh, like in England, you would have a, a session entails everyone playing a solo piece and they go round, round the house again in a second. But a session in Ireland is kind of unique in that way. And uh, the ability to play and to be seen, to be... To, but to Tom, be a, yeah. I, I know I accept the theory, yeah. we both agree on that, but you know better than I do yeah. that, that it happens that someone comes in and who is seriously flawed and actually yeah. can ruin it for well, good musicians. Yeah, well, and it's self-evident. Well, it's self-evident, but who, who would, who's responsible? to save the night for everybody yeah, else, yeah. who's going to say to that person quietly, or does it happen, or do you allow that? Well, it has happened, it has yeah. happened in the so past. If somebody is not up to it, right. they have been told, you know, well, now you hold on there a minute and we'll get you mm -hmm. to play. Maybe we'll give them a, 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 a chance to play on their own or something. But, you know, you can't have one individual um, ruining the session for the rest. It's what I said earlier on, you have to be in a position, okay. you can't do your practicing in a session. Good. It has to be done before you come in. And it is generally up to whoever's leading the session. If if it's going downhill, it's it's bad for their reputation to be yeah. to be chairing a, 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 a... I want to come back to that in a wee bit more detail, yeah. but uh, talking about the cobblestones and sessions, yeah. let's go back over, across the river now, yeah. and we'll have a look at a few tunes been played by Dahi Kearney and some of the students from um, Dundalk Institute Thank of you. Technology yeah. and they're playing tunes written by Josephine Keegan from South Armagh. So okay. let's take a break and enjoy some of the music at the Cobblestones. Christoph, so we're going to play um, two jigs this time, again by Josephine Keegan, um, around and about and the thingy jig. So, one, two, three, four.
Well, Tom, you recognise that place. I indeed do. <laughs> indeed yeah. do yeah. Eat, sleep and live in it day yeah, out. Yeah, yeah. Tom, you're in a great vantage point, as we were saying earlier. Um, what are the main issues, do you think, around uh, sessions and, and etiquette and things not going right? Well, generally the melody is, you know, it's without doubt the melody, you know, is the main stay of the session. And competent musicians, they just you know, they just gel well together. Yeah. It's when the int introduce, it's grand when there's one person back in the rhythm, but when the second one comes in, again, like the bow round, one bow round is sufficient in any session because people are working on different rhythms in yeah. their head. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you even watch tapping of feet in sessions, mm -hmm. you know, you will see possibly the melody part of it, they're all tapping in rhythm, but then if you go, further afield, even if you look at the audience, they're all on a different beat. Hmm. And particularly if they bring hand clapping into it, you know, the place goes. Is just hand clapping a, a, a no-no oh, for musicians? Jesus, yeah. Oh, yeah, big time, big time. Yeah. Christine Rare doesn't like it. Uh, no, he doesn't <laughs> like it. He's not the only one that doesn't like it. Yeah, a lot of people don't But like it is, it. it's, the, it's, it's when the, the rhythm, you can get a great guitar player and he sticks, he, he adds to it. Mm -hmm. You know, you get a great bowing player, he adds to it. But when you bring in another rhythm, and like there's, the, 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 particularly flat holes where you would see three and four bowing in the mm -hmm. session. And some no of them are, are playing gently enough mm -hmm. that you don't even, you know, it doesn't make, make a big difference. But if you have a couple of strong, people playing rhythm and a couple of strong people are working the beat on the bow round, it can actually ruin it, you know, it can make it. What about, Tom, sometimes you have a session of great players and there's yeah. a dominant player, yeah. um, maybe dominant to the extent of, of uh, you know, really kind of taking over the whole agenda. I'm thinking of you know, people, you've had people like Seamus Tansy playing in sessions in the pub. Now, Seamus yeah. is a big character. Well, he would dictate it, yes. And, and uh, you know, is there any way if, if you've got a player who, who is dictating, yeah. you know, the, musicians can find that useful, but some musicians can find it a wee bit well, of a so get, Who deals with that? How would you handle Seamus Tansy? Well, when you see it, well, like, I mean, I think the best thing you can do with Seamus is, is row in because there isn't, he's a, he's a, he's a, he's a, f Full force personality, Big and his music, music his yeah. music is the same, you know. Mm -hmm. And I mean, he is worth listening to, you know. Oh, I mean, a the man is player, yeah, yeah. The man is like he's he's getting older now and all that, and maybe he hasn't the same puff that he had 25, 30 years ago, but he's still a, a fantastic flute mm -hmm. player. And uh, yeah, there's dominant musicians like that, in, in, yeah. in, in, like, and they're they're worth they're worth um, other musicians acknowledge. Their, their dominance maybe and, um, and their legacy it can and, excite yeah. them you know sometimes young players don't even know who Seamus Tansy is or, yeah. or Tommy people they find yeah. young people and uh, how do you encourage young people to, to, to pay respect to people like that yeah well you, you tell them before they go in like we have a we have an icon here tonight yeah. that's you know mm -hmm. yeah. should be respected I was listening to Brian Rooney last night on, 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 on a recording of him and uh, you know there's there, that there's a there's a great man now, you know. It's yeah. just like I mean the stuff that he plays, it's you know, just it's incredible. incredible. Absolutely yeah, incredible. Yeah, yeah. And wouldn't you hit to hear him wasted in between ten or fifteen musicians who are yeah. moving at slightly different yeah. paces in three or four? Yeah, yeah, like one or two guitar. musicians would compliment him. Yeah. Like I mean he is he has proved that in his recordings and his live broadcasts and his live performances, you know. Well All Tom, it. unfortunately we're coming to an end. Is there any other any any other reflections that you want to leave us with before we in etiquette, depart? you know, etiquette is just manners really, and That's nice everybody way of that up. everybody knows what manners are. And when you walk into a strange place, like you you do everyone the courtesy of of um, acknowledging them and asking, you know, if you ask to join a session, you'll be welcomed in. Um, if you just plow ahead, you know, you might get the hackles up with people, but. Most sessions, and 99.99% uh, of the sessions will welcome anybody that comes in, introduces mm -hmm. themselves, and asks permission to join. Mm -hmm. And they're encouraged, you know, they are encouraged, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, and I mean, that's where uh, uh, music um, soars. It's when, when it's all played together and played in unison and played, played at a nice pace, played, you know, where everyone is in harmony. And that's manners on a plate, you know. Common sense, Common good manners. Sense, yeah, manners. Yeah, that's all it's about. Tom, thanks a million for coming you, in. Tommy, and keep up the good work down the cobblestones. <laughs> we'll uh, do that. Next time we get a trap on the shoulder, I know I've broken the etiquette somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> and big Tom's after me. <laughs> anyway, that was Tom Mulligan. And uh, I think a very appropriate way to end up, not just the second series, but the whole 
uh, two series, 12 programmes that we've been doing um, on Irish traditional music. I'd like to thank all of the staff, all of the volunteers, uh, the musicians who took part, our studio audiences, um, and everyone associated with the programme. It's been a great journey of exploration for me personally, and I think uh, most people involved in it enjoyed it, and hopefully we can come back again and do it soon. In the meantime, keep playing, keep at the music. Goodbye.